Hi you guys, welcome to Science Sundays. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to dedicate this episode entirely to the topic of vitamins and minerals and supplementation. So I felt like this was important because I know in every household, there's this big pantry full of different brands of different vitamins and minerals that we take either on a regimented basis, if we're really, really good about it, but usually just when we remember. And we tend to take them in any order, in any combination, at any time of day. But the fact of the matter is, this is not necessarily getting you anywhere. It's not really giving you the full benefit for your efforts. There's a science to combining vitamins and minerals, what time of day to take them, which ones to pair with each other for better absorption, and which ones to not pair with one another, either because they're going to cause a reaction or, inactivate each other. There's so many reasons why you might want to avoid them. So I wanted to break down some commonly supplemented vitamins and minerals that might be in your routine already. I got this list from IG stories. I had asked you guys to let me know which ones you were taking on a regular basis and would want to know more about. And we're going to break down when to take them during the day, why you want to take them then, and which ones to combine with one another for adequate absorption. I do just want to say before we begin though that it is very important that you check with your physician and ensure you've measured your vitamin and mineral status before beginning any supplement protocol to ensure that it is going to benefit you rather than harm you and to make sure that it is not contraindicated by any of your pre-existing health conditions and your medical regime. My hope is that at the end of this video, you will be able to streamline your supplement routine to make sure that the effort that you're putting into your health is really paying off and you're seeing those improvements day after day. So let's get right into it. This is going to be a great video. So jumping right in, let's talk about the supplements you want to take before breakfast on an empty stomach. For the most part, you want to take supplements at this point because they have a tendency to react with stomach acid that is created in larger quantities once there's food in your stomach and most of the time the stomach acid inactivates the supplement. The first one we'll talk about is iron. Before breakfast is when you want to take your iron supplements, whether this is in liquid form or iron pills. You will know why you're taking iron if you're taking iron, but I will say it is a component of hemoglobin and hemoglobin is this molecule that transport oxygen all throughout your body. A low level of iron, whether due to deficiency, blood loss, etc., can be experienced as fatigue, lethargy, and a weakened immune system. So it is very important to supplement if you're suffering with a deficiency. Iron is best taken on an empty stomach, but most ideally with vitamin C, which will aid in the absorption of the iron. Vitamin C can be a glass of fresh pressed orange juice or even just taking your iron with a little lemon squeezed into your water. Iron can cause constipation, so taking it with water or making sure that you're eating an adequate amount of fiber later on in the day is very important. Iron from animal sources is so much more absorbable than iron from plant foods like spinach, beans, or grains because other factors in plant-based sources inhibit the uptake of iron, for example, the oxalic acid in spinach. So exogenous supplementation, especially for vegetarians, is generally a good idea. You should also avoid taking iron with things like tea or coffee because the caffeine and the tannins in those drinks will inactivate the iron. Another substance to avoid taking with iron is calcium because both calcium and iron inhibit the absorption of one another. This is very important to note if you suffer with any condition that would be affected by these compounds like anemia, osteoporosis, etc. You want to make sure that your supplements are being adequately absorbed and if you're taking them with one another that may be a reason why your levels aren't going up as you do your blood tests over time. You also want to avoid taking iron with copper and zinc because these compounds are all absorbed through the same receptors in the gastrointestinal tract and the absorption of one kind of overcrowds the absorption of others leading to a deficiency that was unintended. Next is vitamin C, and this is an amazing antioxidant that is going to start your body off right and energize your cells right first thing in the morning. But if you're taking iron at the same time, it's also going to help that absorption like we discussed earlier. So taking it on an empty stomach is ideal, but you can take it at any other point during the day and actually splitting up the dose or repeating your dose throughout the day isn't really going to cause you any harm and is quite often recommended. 
Next, let's talk about B vitamins. There are eight different B vitamins, one, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, and 12. These are crucial for everything from your red blood cell production to nerve function to eyesight. This is really important for every major function in the body, but especially for women who are pregnant because it's going to aid in your fetal brain development, reduce the risk of birth defects, and even ease your nausea. It's even important in men to replace the testosterone that is lost over time due to age and also to help support muscle and strength gains. Vitamin B is found in dairy, meat, seafood, dark leafy greens, whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, avocado, citrus, yeast, etc. So unless you're eating a very limited diet, the chances of you being deficient in your vitamin B, unless of course you have an absorptive concern, is low. While a regulated supplement routine is unlikely to cause overdose, an unnecessarily heavy supplement routine can cause things like gastrointestinal upset, skin flushing or rashes, and even nerve damage. So always check with your physician if it is right for you and follow the instructions on the supplement. When you are supplementing them, know this. They are water soluble, so they can really be taken at any time and don't require there to be food in your stomach for adequate absorption. So taking them first thing in the morning is a great idea. However, you want to avoid taking them at night because they can cause restlessness and insomnia and keep you up, interrupting your sleep. So ideally, like I said, take them first thing in the morning, unless of course you have a sensitive stomach, in which case you can put a little bit of food um, in your body before you take them and it's not going to hinder the absorption very much at all. Let's talk about B12 though, specifically. Ideally, you wanna find a vegan sublingual drop that you can take and you want to look for things like methylcobalamin rather than cyanocobalamin because it won't have to go through a digestion process before it is absorbed. Finally, you're going to wrap up your morning routine with probiotics and these are friendly gut bacteria that help replenish our natural gut flora. There is however some conflicting research on the matter in terms of what time of day to take them. Some say that you should always take probiotics on an empty stomach 30 to 60 minutes before meals to prevent interaction with digestive enzymes and harsh stomach acids, which can destroy live cultures. But certain evidence also shows that healthy fats can buffer stomach acids, so taking the probiotics with a meal may offer increased protection. When you do take them, however, you never wanna take them with a warm drink, like I was mentioning earlier, the tea, the coffee, anything warm and anything with caffeine because that heat and the caffeine can both destroy the living microorganisms and we wanna keep them as intact as possible. The next time of day you wanna start taking supplements again is after breakfast. There are certain supplements that are better absorbed when there's some food in your stomach and this is usually because they are fat soluble, meaning they require your body to have some kind of fat in order to be broken down and absorbed. Number one in this regime can be B-complex. Like I said, taking it before or after food is not really going to hinder your absorption too much. It really just depends on your stomach. Another important supplement to take during this time is coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is a naturally occurring compound found in every cell, but especially in organs with high energy requirements like the heart and the brain. It is referred to as the biochemical spark plug because of its importance in the generation of energy. Because it is so central to producing energy, you don't want to take it at the end of the day or before bed because it will hinder your sleep. However, it is also fat soluble, so you do want to take it after a meal, thereby making it the perfect vitamin to take right after breakfast. Dietary fats that aid the absorption include things like chia seeds, hemp seeds, avocado, olive oil, coconut oil, ghee, anything along those lines. And like I said, will help you get the most benefit of the vitamins and minerals that are fat soluble. The next supplement we'll mention is zinc. Zinc is another substance that is crucial to our immune system, our reproductive system, our fertility, etc. And it's found in sources like meat, seafood, nuts, seeds, this is best taken at this point because it can cause a little bit of nausea if it's taken on an empty stomach. You also wanna avoid taking it with calcium. Next is vitamin D, and this is something that is synthesized in our body in reaction to exposure to sunlight. It's kind of like our version of photosynthesis. It helps the body maintain muscle, bones, teeth, the immune system, etc. Again, it's fat soluble, so you wanna have it with a meal. But one study actually found that taking vitamin D with dinner, which is generally the heaviest meal of the day, increased blood levels of vitamin D by 50%. But 
because vitamin D disrupts the body's production of melatonin and therefore sleep, it's better to have it after breakfast or after lunch with, like I said, healthy fats that include your avocados, your healthy nuts and seeds, salmon, etc. And now you're done for the rest of the day until right before bed when you want to take two important supplements in particular, one being magnesium and the other being calcium. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body, and while most of us know it as supporting the structure of bones and teeth, it is also so important for nerve transmission and muscle function. Taking calcium at this time is important because like we mentioned earlier, it disrupts the absorption of iron. So pushing them to opposite ends of the day is very important, but you also don't want to wait until too late at night to take calcium because taking it after the food in your stomach after dinner has been absorbed can actually lead to kidney stones. So you really want to take it right after dinner when there's still food in your system and you can pair it with magnesium for best absorption. Magnesium is another very abundant mineral in the body, again found in bones and teeth, but it is also crucial for its calming effects on the muscles and nervous system. This calming effect also aids our sleep, so it's best to take it about two to three hours before bed. One to one or two to one ratio between magnesium and calcium is the most ideal for absorption of both. So there you have it. There's a quick rundown of supplements that for the most part are already in your routine and a breakdown of when to take them, what to take them with and what not to take them with. Not all supplements are created equal. So there is a little bit of gameplay with which brands to use and which formulations are going to be most effective. But for the most part, I don't want you to have to keep taking supplements that aren't doing any benefit to you. So hopefully this helps you streamline your process. In my next supplement video, we'll talk about things like prenatals, burdock roots, spirulina, evening primrose, green tea tablets, etc. So if you have any other recommendations, please let me know and I'll be sure to include them in the next video. So that's all for now. Happy supplementing and I will talk to you soon. Bye.